What's going on everyone? Mario here with AutoDS. In today's video, we're gonna be covering five different tools that you can use to help you in your product research. Let the tool do the work. These different tools can all help you find trending and best selling products. So make sure you check out this video all the way through and you don't skip out on any one of these tools because these different tools that I'm gonna be covering today all can help you make some extra money by helping you find some winning products. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you check out this video all the way through. Also, if you want access to everything that I'm talking about in today's video, including all of the different links and a few different tips and tricks, make sure you comment down below the hashtag dropshipping along with which one of these tools is your favorite and I'll send you access to the cheat sheet. All right, with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first tool on this list is one that is gonna help you validate any product or any niche. On top of that, it can also help you anticipate upcoming trends. So with that, we have Google Trends. Now, Google Trends is one of my hands down favorite product research tools ever. This can really help you start to anticipate upcoming trends. So if you're in, let's say, December and you're trying to get a store ready for maybe six months down the line, you really want to put in a lot of work and you want to know what's going to be trending six months down the line. This is where Google Trends comes in. So for this, we need to go to trends.google.com. And once we're on here, all we're going to do is simply look up either a niche or a product. Typically, looking up a niche is going to be your best bet because products are very specific, but you can do both. You can do either or. Now, we had the idea of starting something, let's say, for June. So let's think of what can potentially be popular in June. It's summer. So during summer, there's a lot of people that are outside playing sports. There's a lot of people that are going to the pools, going to the beach. And probably one of the most popular activities is actually going out to the beach. So some of the most popular beach products can be things like tents, toys, swimsuits. So let's see what we can find that has demand for summer. So let's go ahead and look up swimsuits. Now, once we look up whatever search term we're looking for, the first thing that we're going to want to do is switch over the time frame. By default, you're going to have the last day. That's not really going to help us at all. We want to go back either 12 months or what I always do is every five years. Now here you can see a clear trend and where the spikes are. The entire thing is laid out perfectly. So here we can see that the spikes are definitely in June, another spike in June, another spike in June, another spike in June, and you guessed it, another spike in actually May, not June, but it's just a couple days difference. Now at these spikes, that's not when we want to start selling our products because that's actually at the very, very top of the mountain. So after this time frame, it all just goes downhill and nobody's buying anything anymore. So we want to actually start selling right before it starts going up or maybe even a little bit before. So here we can see that maybe around November, we can start stocking up our store. And throughout the first six months, you're really going to see that it starts to actually pick up considerably. So in November, it's at the very lowest. That's when we want to start stocking up our store because in December, it starts to somewhat raise, but then January, that's just when it starts to just completely skyrocket. And that's not just in 2020. We can say the same for 2021. January, everything starts to go up. February, March, same thing goes for 2022. November, everything's at rock bottom. January, everything starts to go up, kind of stalls in March, but then in May, it just blasts off. Now, if you're looking to dropship in, let's say, specific states or specific regions in a particular country, then you can check out this right here through the interest by subregion. Here you're going to see what states or what regions are searching up the most. So who's looking up for swimsuits the most during these last five years? We can see that so far it's Missouri, Utah, Minnesota, and Nebraska. I'm surprised that Florida is not on here or California, but then I guess maybe people in California and in Florida already have swimsuits throughout the entire year because it's always hot. Everybody in Missouri, Utah, and Minnesota, they actually have seasons, so they actually have winters, whereas let's say in Florida, we don't. I mean, we do, but it, 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 it never gets cold here. But anyway, I digress. Now, if you want to see any related topics or any related queries, so what are other people searching for in relation to swimsuits, then we can go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can see that there's a few different related topics. There's top, so it would be like, let's say, a bathing suit top. There's also one piece, which is a show. I'm not sure why. No, I'm sorry. One piece would actually be <laughs> one piece would actually be a one piece swimsuit. I'm, I'm thinking about the anime. I'm sorry. So they do have the tops, the one pieces, swim shorts, swim bottoms and Addison Ray, American singer songwriter. I'm not sure what that has to do with swimsuits, 
but sure, I guess. Now let's look up one more niche. So let's think about something that a lot of people like to buy. So what's one thing that's very, very popular? Phone cases. Phone cases are very generic, but they're always selling. And it's also in a completely different niche. So within the last five years, you can see that the graph here is a lot different. It's more stable in the fact that it has less major spikes, but it still has its spikes here and there. And let's see where. So between April to about November, it's pretty steady. It's not an insane amount of queries. People are searching for it, but it's not breakout. Then around November to December is when it really starts going up, which means Christmas. Keep going. You see the same thing throughout 2020. It's got some pretty good spikes, but then it drops down. And then the biggest spike then comes around December again. Same thing goes for the rest of the year. You have your spike up here, December to, yeah, to December. And then it's pretty much the exact same thing throughout December spike, November spike, December spike. So obviously phone cases are trending throughout the entire year because everyone's always buying a new case for the phone. But during Christmas time is when it really starts to pick up. And when there's more of a breakout, there's more demand. All right, number two, we have the ever popular, most infamous TikTok research method. So when it comes to finding trending products, the number one place that you're going to find literally anything and everything is going to be on TikTok. Any niche that you're interested in, you're going to find some sort of advertisement on TikTok for it. Now, how can we look directly on TikTok to find something within our niche that we want to sell, something that's actually trending and something that can make us some money, make us some profit? Well, everyone knows about the typical hashtag TikTok made me buy it, but we're going to do that, but we're also going to add a little bit extra. So check this out. This is the way that I do it. And this is how I found all of my products. So simply go on TikTok, look up the hashtag TikTok made me buy it like everything else. But typically, if you look up TikTok made me buy it, what you're going to find is everything. You're going to find the best sellers in every single niche, every single category, the most random products you can possibly come across. So we're going to niche down. So we're going to look up hashtag TikTok made me buy it space dogs. So let's say we're going into the dog niche or into the pet niche. Then here we can see that simply just by looking up this and adding that little extra keyword, we get personalized recommendations specifically for dogs. Now, everything on here is going to be for pups. Now we can do the same thing and look up, let's say cars. Maybe we want to do an automotive dropshipping store and we're looking to dropship automotive parts. Same thing. TikTok made me buy it, space, cars. Now, everything on here is specifically for cars. Now, one thing that you need to know about this, something that is very important, is that you're going to find a lot of outdated products here. So you're going to find some stuff, which actually this isn't that bad, 10, 20, 20, 23. This was maybe five, six months ago. So it's still relevant. It could still be relevant, especially for a niche like car parts or car products, car care products as well. These are pretty much trending year round. But if you do want to validate that, then just go back to Google Trends and see when it is trending. But either way, here we can see that everything is between 2023. There's not much in 2024. So you can't really do this on actually, yeah, right here. So 2.4. This one was actually a few months ago and it has 8.1 million views. That's insane. This one over here for seven. This was actually just, I would say, about 10 days ago and it's almost at a million. So what I'm trying to get here is go for stuff that's newer, go for stuff that's more relevant, stuff that's more up to date. You want to look back maybe three to six months, more than six months, things could potentially be outdated. But if you're looking at TikTok on your phone, you actually have the option to be able to filter out your results. So you can look up videos that have been released within the last six months. So you don't have things that are a year two, four years old. All right, next up, we have Timu. Timu. Yeah, so bear with me here for a minute. So Timu is essentially the AliExpress that's geared towards consumers. Everyone knows about Timu, whether you're a dropshipper or you're the average consumer. You're somebody that just likes to purchase online. Everyone knows about Timu. Timu's marketing at the beginning was just absolutely insane. And everyone found out about Timu. So because of that, people actually go on Timu to find new products, products that are just coming out and to find them at a cheaper price. So the reason we're bringing up Timu here is because they have a five star rated and a best sellers section. These two are full of best sellers. These are things that people are purchasing right now. Everyone is looking for these different types of products. And there's a reason why they're on here. 
because there's demand. Now, this is their five star rated. These are the ones that are essentially the most popular, the ones that are being purchased the most and being reviewed at the highest. So all of the ones that you find here are going to have essentially the best quality and the most demand. Same thing goes for the best seller section here. You're going to find the ones that are selling the absolute most. Like, look at this hammock right here. This is actually really cool. And it's sold over 23,000. Supposedly, this is nice. I'm going to keep that open because I'm actually I might actually buy that for myself. But why Timu? Why Timu as a product research method? Because again, people come here to look for these different types of products, to look to see what's upcoming, to look to see what's trending and to just pretty much see what they can find at a cheaper price. So what we can do is we can find our products on here. We can see what's trending, which ones have the most reviews, which ones have been selling the most recent. And from there, we can start to source our different products. We can see where we can find them cheaper without the extremely bright orange packaging that says Timu on it. Now, when you are on Timu and you find something that actually has some good reviews or it has a lot of sales, you want to make sure you want to validate those reviews. So jump onto the actual product page, click on the link and look at the reviews. So here we have item reviews and then we have provider reviews. So from what I can get from this, provider reviews are essentially those reviews that you can import from other websites or from, let's say, your supplier. So let's say you're using judge.me product reviews. You can use that app to import reviews from your supplier. So this looks to be something similar, except maybe not from their supplier, but from other websites. So here you can see that the product reviews are 12,318, but then here you have item reviews, which seem to be a bit more specific. So these are specifically for this product. So here we have, it works pretty good, way better than using a broom. Fantastic, just a toy I was looking for. Not sure about the toy. Okay, but then they do go on ahead and mention it does a great job on hardwood floors and rugs. Okay, so then that works as well. So this review is for this product. It's not just a generic review or something that was copied and pasted. This sweeper is cool. I actually bought it for my hubby to use. Okay, so these reviews are specific to the product. So they're actually talking about the product and they're talking about the features. That's what you want to look for. You want to look for reviews that validate the product and are actually relevant. Remember, a lot of suppliers sometimes, I'm not saying this always happens, but sometimes there can be fake reviews. Some very generic reviews that just say, this is a great product. I bought it from my mom. She loves it. My dog loved it. Those types of reviews you want to stay away from. You want to look for products that have specific reviews, kind of like this one. All right, next up we have Google Lens. Now, Google Lens is also one of my favorite product research tools because it really, essentially what it is, is Googling images. So you know how you Google text? You know how you can go on Google and look up what products can I drop ship? Well, in this case, what you can do is you can actually Google images. So you can Google an image to see what other websites have either that same image or similar images. A lot of the times I use this, let's say if I'm looking on TikTok and I look up hashtag TikTok, maybe buy it. Plus, let's say the dog niche and I find a cool product that I like. This is how I essentially backtrack it. So for this, the best way this works is by using Google Chrome. So all you have to do is get a clear image, right click and search image with Google. Now, if it doesn't automatically pick it up, you are going to have to select the image. But in this case, it did. And what happens is this little bar on the right is going to open. So we can see here that on Timu, it's running for $12.59. On Amazon, it's actually selling for about $31. On Walmart, it's selling for $42, $43. Then we can go ahead and start looking through all of the different ones here and see what we can find in terms of our supplier. So here we have one on AliExpress. It is a little bit expensive. It's matching the price, so it's $33. But let's see if we can find it cheaper. All right, so I clicked into the listing and then I started looking through all of the related items. And I realized that pretty much all of the listings on AliExpress are actually running between 30 to about $40, but every single one of them is on sale. And for the most part, you're going to be finding them between 10 to about 13 or $14. So what this is telling me is that this product, the original price is typically going to be between 10 to $15 more or less. And it's one of those products that is just for some reason, it's, it's just always on sale. Now, if the product does go back up to regular price, then what you can do is you can adjust your pricing or you can look up a different supplier that is selling it for the sale price. From the research that I've been doing, from everything that I've been looking up right now on AliExpress, every single one of these products is pretty much always going to be on sale. So I'm pretty comfortable being able to source this price at $10 and about 71 cents or between 10 to $15. Now, in order to help you with this, in order to make sure that you don't lose money, 
one of the best things that you can do is actually start to implement automation into your dropshipping business. Now, the way that automation can help you out is going to be in terms of price adjustment. So over at AutoDS, if you're signed up to the platform, you have the option to automate your entire dropshipping business. One of those features that you get access to is going to be price optimization and price adjustment. Same thing with stock monitoring. So if a supplier ever runs out of any particular product or if their prices go up or if they go down, AutoDS will automatically match your inventory to reflect the change on your supplier's end. So if their price goes up by $10, you can set it so that way your price also goes up by $10 or maybe less or maybe a little bit more. It's really up to you. But point is, you can price match and you can have everything done automatically. If for whatever reason, this supplier runs out, let's say they run out of this particular product, then AutoDS will set your inventory to zero. So that way you're not making sales when this item is out of stock. Before we move on to number five, remember if you want access to the cheat sheet with everything that I'm talking about, including all of the different links, make sure you comment down below the hashtag dropshipping and let me know which one of these tools is your favorite and which one you plan on implementing into your store. And with that, we move on to number five, which is gonna be the ultimate product research tool and that's gonna be AutoDS. Now AutoDS, like I mentioned earlier, has the option to completely automate your entire dropshipping business. From the product importing all the way to the order fulfillment, everything is taken care of pretty much by the system itself. So you are hands off. All you have to do is focus on your product research, focus on importing more trending and best selling products and scaling your business. Now, the different types of tools that we have on AutoDS is what's gonna make this probably the ultimate tool that you can use for product research. So for one, we have our handpicked products section. On here, you can find tons of winning products, all handpicked by expert dropshippers with proven demand. Everything here is backed by data, so you can rest assured that every product here has been validated. In the handpicked product section, everything has actually been validated by somebody in particular. Now, going with that, here you can find tons of different products to choose from in a variety of niches. If you wanna choose your particular category, you can do so up here. And if you wanna filter your results by any other specifics, then you can do that up here as well. Now, let me get to what really makes the handpicked product section the ultimate tool for product research. So let's look up one product that we would like for our store here, shall we? All right, so I like this wood splitter. This is an interesting one. So let's click into that. Now, once we're on here, you're gonna have tons of information. For one, you're gonna have a potential profit. So you're gonna have more or less how much you can make. The real MVP here though, has to be the engagement score and the saturation score. A little bit more on that in a second. Aside from that, if you're running ads, let's say if you're running Facebook or TikTok ads, then you can use your target audience here to help target a specific demographic of people. Then for your marketing, if you need help marketing, if you don't know how to create content or if you don't really have any ideas on how to market your products, specifically on social media like Facebook or TikTok, then we have a social ads section. This product in particular only has TikTok ads, but if there are Facebook ads running for it, you're gonna find them here as well. Now, all you have to do is click on see original ad or just click on it through here and you're gonna see what the ad entails. You're gonna see everything that they do, how it's being shown, and you can even see the different results. So how much engagement did it get? How many likes? How many comments? How many shares? So that way you can see whether or not it's worth your time to replicate or not. And last but not least, if you don't know how to price your products or if you need some examples to see what your competition is doing, then we got you covered on that as well. Here, there's a competitor section. These are different websites that are actively selling the same product, all at different price ranges, all with completely different store layouts. So you can use this as inspiration to structure your own website or to help you price your products competitively. Now, back to the saturation and the engagement score. This is the good part. So the engagement score really tells you how active this product is on social media. How much engagement is it getting? Does it have a lot of likes? Does it have a lot of shares? Does it have a lot of posts? Are multiple people posting about it? All of that is gonna add up to our engagement score. Now, you're gonna have two extremes. You're gonna have the active and you're gonna have the inactive, and then you're gonna have the middle. For the most part, most of the products on here are gonna be either in the mild or the moderate section. But when it comes to the engagement score, honestly, regardless of where it's at, you still have room to be able to jump in there. So if it's inactive, that means there's not a lot of buzz around it in social media. Either it's not trending or it's not trending yet. So in this case, you can go in with some pretty creative ad creatives and see what you can spark up. 
try different ads, try different videos, try different content, see which ones work, and then keep going from there. So if you find that one particular ad creative works, just make more that are similar to it. Now, if it's in the active section, that means there's a lot of people already on it. But that in itself isn't necessarily a problem because if something is trending on, let's say, TikTok, that means if more people start to create content around it, then those videos have a chance of picking up traction as well. The only thing is, is that you have to find some different and creative ways to go about it, because if everyone's already making content about it, you need to stand out. You can't be making the same thing that everyone else is. Now, as far as the saturation score, this is where it can get a bit tricky. So you have the full market and then you have the empty. And then, of course, you have the in between, which is going to be the busy and the quiet. If it's in between, you're fine. If it's under empty, then you're you're in prime real estate at that point. If it's in full market, you, you can still make a few sales. But at this point, this product could potentially be oversaturated and there could be a lot of people selling it. So again, kind of just like with the engagement score, you have to find creative ways to be able to market it. Now, if it's on empty, that means there's not a lot of people selling it online. So yeah, there's going to be a few stores selling it, but they might not be too active or it just might be four or five different stores. If you start to get in between the quiet and the busy, that means more people are starting to run ads on this. There's more market saturation on it. There's more people selling it online and more platforms, multiple platforms as well. Again, don't let that deter you because everyone's going to be selling every single product at any given point. So what you need to do is just make sure you're not finding a product that's just overly saturated or something that literally everyone is selling, like at the time, fidget spinners. If you got into fidget spinners early, then you could have made some money. If you got in halfway throughout the trend, you could have still made some money. If you got in when they were at their most popular more than likely, you only made a couple bucks, maybe five or six dollars, and that's it because then the trend died down. So if it's in full market, be wary of it. You can still make some money, but look for things that are mostly in the busy or the quiet section. Aside from that, though, we also have a TikTok spy section, and this one is absolutely amazing because this gives you tons of different creatives along with tons of different products that you can potentially sell as well. So here you can filter out your videos or your ads based off of different metrics, like different types of engagement. So how many likes does it have? How many impressions does it have? How many interactions does it have or the interaction rate? So how many people are liking it? How many people are sharing it? How many people are saving the videos? This is based off of a percentage. Then you have the CTA button. So do you want to see ads that are specifically telling people to order something? Or are you looking for ads that are telling people to click here to buy it now? Different CTA buttons can have different reactions or different conversions at the end. So it's pretty good to test out different ones and see which ones could work for you or see what's working for other people. Now, let's just quickly look into one of these. So here, a lot of them, some of them don't have many likes. So this one only has two likes. This one obviously didn't do very well. So let's look for something that has more than 20,000 likes. There you go. Now it's getting good. Now, source, do we want to look for organic or do we want to look for advertising? Advertising means there's a budget behind it. Organic means there isn't. So let's go ahead with organic because that's always my favorite. But on here, you are going to have a lot more variety because not as many people actually promote their products organically versus paid ads. So paid ads is going to have more targeted products. It's going to have more actual products, whereas organic or TikTok shop is going to have a bit more variety. So let's see what we can find here. All right, right here. Let's look at this one. This thing could entertain him and us. So this is... Of course, the pet niche, 75,000 likes, 269 comments and 22,000 shares. Let's see what's so special about this. It's a dog, of course. Any any videos with dogs are just going to do absolutely amazing. And if you can get them doing a silly reaction like this, even better. All right. So obviously this ball is something that I should look out for because I actually have a pet store myself. So let's check out this TikTok ad impressions. One point nine million. That's insane. So let's go ahead and see the original post. Okay, so this one is actually eligible for commission, which means that this is a product that they're selling on the TikTok shop. So this guy's an affiliate for this particular product, but you can find the same product on Amazon. I've seen it all the time. One way to do this is by backtracking it with, let's say, Google Lens, or you can simply just find this video on your mobile and click on the link and then look for it that way. So that way you can see exactly what it is. You can also use Google Lens through your phone. And last but not least, the last thing I wanna show you 
in AutoDS for product research is going to be the trending product section. Now, the trending product section is going to have a lot more products than you're going to have in the handpicked product section. The reason for this is because all of these products are actually imported with AI. So you have three different sections. You have the handpicked product section, which is products that are imported and selected by actual dropshippers. So these are all handpicked. Then you're going to have the TikTok spy, which is just going to give you a ton of different ad creatives that you can look through. And you're going to have the trending product section, which isn't handpicked, but these are products that have demand that have been chosen through AI. So here you're going to have quite the variety of products and you're also going to have some information as well. So you're going to have things like the sell price along with the interaction rate. And those are the top five product research tools to help aid your product research to find trending and winning products. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Remember, if you want access to the cheat sheet, all you have to do is drop a comment down below with the hashtag dropshipping and let me know which one of these tools was your favorite. Once I see that you did that, I'll reply back with a link to the sheet. Huge thank you once again for watching this video all the way through. It truly means a lot. With that, my name is Mario with AutoDS and I'll catch you guys next time.